These are beautiful sports seats. They're really comfy. I think they look absolutely stunning. It's not very traditional, but again, it's a futuristic look. How responsive this is. It is super responsive. Yeah. Flat bottom, multi-function. And this one's got paddle shift. Nice. Um, no one uses that, Connor. Okay, review time. And this is part two of a two-part review of this, the Mark 8 Golf. GTI. So in part one, we talk about the exterior, we look at the standard features that are on this car, talk about the colour and everything. If you've not watched that, probably worth watching that before this one. Uh, so the link to that video is, is up there, check that out. In this video, we're going to be talking about the interior of the vehicle. So, what's better to do on a red hot day like this <laughs> than sit in a car which can't have the air conditioning on because it makes too much noise for the video and talk about it. Let's have fun. Let's go. Let's get dehydrated. <laughs> okay, so I think it would be wrong not to start this video by talking about the seats because the seats are in a GTI are probably up there with you know its most well-known features. So this is the uh, Chikara cloth seats. Um, so they're similar to the the original GTI. This real sort of picnic style checker finish but they've kind of made it a little bit more neutral yeah. because it was that was always a, bit, a little bit of a 50 50 split for some customers whether or not they liked that or not it was a little bit marmite they either loved it or hated it so i think this style possibly gives it a little bit more it shouldn't have that marmite effect is what i'm trying to say because it's not quite as in your face still trying to keep to that you know gti heritage yeah um but also just sort of blending it a little bit with you know 2021 just not to polarize it as much i was gonna say you do get the futuristic look with these yeah i mean they're nice. yeah, these, yeah. these are beautiful sports seats they look they're really comfy i think they look absolutely stunning you know you've got this type of sort of suede effect here on, yeah. the, on the bolsters um which yeah look look really nice they look stunning to be fair they do they do um now this i want to talk about the center sort of the gear selector here what do you think about this I this think it's sort of very small sort of so gear selector i like it like it's not very traditional but like it's again it's a futuristic look like like the gti has been introduced to the future isn't yeah. it really i do like it i do like it but i do also like to have a little bit of a like a what they call like a stalk yeah gear selector where you can potentially just rest your hand on it a little bit whereas you can't with that it's just you select it and then you've got to got to leave it but it's dead easy to use um i've used a few, i've driven a few vehicles with this style now um disappointingly the new volkswagen caddy has this gear selector oh does it yeah <laughs> which is a little bit like really <laughs> really i mean i know they need to you know they're trying to get the commercials you know a little you know a bit more car like but come on maybe it shouldn't quite have that no i agree not in a caddy <laughs> but yeah but i really like that um if looking at storage space We've got um, a drinks holder here, just enough for one decent sized one. You're gonna fit a small drink there, but this is also wireless phone charging by the looks of it. Cool. Not the biggest sort of bucket or cubby hole here. It's all right, it's not huge. It's not huge, right. it's not decent. You've got a 12 volt uh, battery there. Oh, cool, cool. And then like a sunglasses holder. Oh, sorry, this is your mobile phone store. Oh, right. right this okay. is your mobile phone charging, wireless charging. Uh, that's really where they're saying you should be putting the keys, sorry. Right, mate. Do apologise. Right. Um, so that's your mobile phone charging, and then you can, I think the idea is you lock that away. I see. And you don't look at your phone. Good Again, storage. two USB type C charging sockets there. Right. Really minimise the buttons here. Um, so there's only four, and then obviously your, your hazard warning. Um, and then everything else is controlled by this big uh, media display here which is the same as what i've got in my uh, id3 uh, which i really like it's um, looking red yeah isn't it? it's, it's mm, yeah it's all right um <laughs> it's coming from a city fan <laughs> but the so let's have a quick look at this how how responsive this is and it is it is super responsive yeah and what, what i like they have sort of really tried to improve the navigation on the new uh new vw uh, range so you can put things in like you know uh, McDonald's mm. and it, you know find the nearest McDonald's which they didn't tend to do that you know that well at doing 
that type of thing before. Um, so that's a big improvement. You've got the virtual dash here. Let's just turn that on so you can see it. It looks slick, doesn't it? it, it looks, looks very really nice. Slick. Needs a little bit of fuel, this one. <laughs> uh, but looks, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Just all worth pointing out this honeycomb finish here on the trim, which is then followed all the way around on the doors. Yeah. Just looks really, just again, we spoke about in part one. If you've not watched it, check that out. The honeycomb grill, which a lot of people sort of really didn't like at first, but they stuck with it and they followed that round into the interior, which looks really nice. It does look really nice. No, it's much better than the part on the RS4, isn't it? No, because what we're talking about on the RS4 was this part here. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which is, is the same, basically. That's true, that's it's true. It's basically the same, which is, again, a little bit a little bit disappointing. Um, cubby holes on the, on the sides. Decent size, you're going to fit a big bottle of water in there and then a few little bits uh, inside as well. Um, so, yeah, plenty of storage all around. And then to finish up, let's talk about the steering wheel. Flat bottom, multi function. Uh, this one's got paddle shift. Nice. Um, it, no one uses that, Connor. No, I like it. I, it's well, nice yeah, to have. You don't, you don't use it. You do not use it. I use it on my racing rig at home, that's it. <laughs> it's 100% a, it's a, a gimmick. Yeah, uh, but a lot of people do like it, and they yeah. like. But you use it the first day, and then go. God, that's a pain in the ass. Yeah. I just let the uh, yeah the DSG gearbox to sort all that. You've got a nice GTI badge down here. That's slick, that. And then this sort of like perforated uh, leather sort of grip here as well, which just breaks up the steering wheel. All in all, very nice. Um, a lot of people have commented about this sort of the. Um, the buttons here on the steering wheel yeah, sort of you know and people i've seen loads of videos of people saying you know they, they just brush it and it changes the radio or changes the volume i've got to say in my experience with these these selectors here on the steering wheel that's utter nonsense really i've never sort of just touched it and it's changed the radio station or done anything you, you do have to give it a bit of a a bit of a push to get it to do something so i'm not i'm not buying that i like it i think they work really well i don't like these here to be said these these selectors here where you yeah you know i've never kind of got sort of you know scripts with them particularly especially when driving mm. they're a little bit fiddly to to do so i just use the one on the steering wheel all the time to up and down the volume change tracks things like that and it works absolutely perfectly so I think they're more than adequate.